Praise the Lord, everybody. It's me again. Um, after I finished uh, with chapter 7, I got thinking about it, and I thought, you know what? I don't want to wait till tomorrow. I want to talk about chapter 8 tonight, and of course, I'll probably post it uh, tomorrow. And I already recorded it once, and then I messed up the recording, so I had to delete that, and we're going to start over again here with chapter 8. So, uh, bear with me, you know, <laughs> things happen in this world, amen? So, praise God. But I do want to talk about chapter 8 tonight, and I want to read it as we go along and, and, you know, make a couple comments here and there, because chapter 8 is one of my favorite favorite chapters in the book of Deuteronomy. It's just a, a, a very beautiful, beautiful chapter, and it just contains so much that we can, we can look at and say, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be, amen? So, uh, uh, Man, I just I just don't know how much the people back in those days realized how special they were before God. Uh, I know that we are, and and just to stop to think that we were created, you know, before the foundation of the world, God knew us, and we're His chosen people now. So um, I find that to be exciting that that we are His chosen, uh, His chosen people. So let's get on here with chapter eight. Praise God. Let's. Um, Father, thank you for this book. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this time together with my brothers and sisters in Christ. If only one person watches and gets something out of it, Father, then it's accomplished what it's supposed to. Because, Father, you have said in your word that your word shall not return to you void, Father, but it shall accomplish exactly what it was sent for. So, Father, we thank you for this. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. All right. Now, again, again, I'm reading out of the New American Standard Bible. I've had this Bible for many, 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 many years. Um, I think I've had it since 1991. And uh, it's my, it's, you know, I, I put this on the front here, and God we trust. Um, I can remember a time, and, and one of these days I will do, the, I will do a video, um, a story about something that happened to me. Oh, boy, around 2006 or so. In Bel Air, Maryland, uh, when officials tried to take away my Bible, they told me I couldn't have it. And it's a long story, but it's a good story. Um, I can remember, I can remember them taking the Bible from me. I can remember them saying, "No, you have to get up off the Bible now. Give it to us now." And uh, I'm telling you, when they did, it's like somebody had, had ripped something out of me. Uh, and I, I remember that when I lost my mom and my dad and, and my older brother, uh, <clears throat> and that hurt. I cut very deeply to lose your family. And I mean, I, you know, I mean, it hurts deep, and I'm sure that many of you know. But when they took that word of God from me, my Bible from me, that hurt worse than going through any of the of of the mourning or or the uh, the announcement that that my family members had died. It actually hurt me worse. Because this is my life. This is, this is what I want to live by each and every single day. This is God talking to me. This is, I, take this, I take the words in here very, 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 very personal. And so when they, when they took it from me, oh my gosh, man. I'm telling you, it was worse than, it was worse than any pain I ever felt uh, in, in hearing about a death of a family member. That may sound weird, but uh, for those who, who understand what I'm, who, who, practice what I practice here and, and make the Bible their life, You under, they understand. So praise God. All right, so let's begin chapter 8, verse 1. All right. All the commandments that I am commanding you today. Now notice he didn't say a few commandments. All of the commandments that I am commanding you today, you shall be careful to do that you may what? Live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to give to your forefathers. And you shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Wow. Verse 3, And he humbled you, and let you be hungry, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know that he might make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. I got to stop there for a second about this verse. Uh, I love to bake. 
I really do. I mean, my specialty is pecan pie and key lime pie and apple pie. Those are my three specialties. And, uh, and, and I'm not boasting, but I think I make one of the best apple, pecan, and key lime pie uh, that's around. Uh, just ask um, uh, some, of, some of the people that, have, that I've given them to um, or some of the people that have bought them. They'll tell you that, in uh, fact, one woman, uh, I used to work with her. Her name is Brenda. And uh, Brenda, until the first time she had a piece of my key lime pie, she said, you know, I've never really been a fan of key lime pie until I tasted yours. And now the only key lime pie I eat will be yours. And she's kept that ever since. And uh, she does like my key lime pie. I have a secret in all three of the recipes. But anyways, praise God. But anyways, so as I was getting ready to say, so when I was thinking about possibly opening a bakery, I was going to name the bakery. Um, well, it was th my nickname back in when I worked in bakery back in those days was called Pie Crust. That's what they had me. That was my, my P-I-E-K-R-U-S-T. That's what they called me, Pie Crust. And I was going to put down our daily bread bakery. And then underneath it, I was going to say, man shall not live by bread alone, but also cakes, donuts, pies. Amen. All right. Praise God. <laughs> it's just my little sick sense of humor. All right. So let's go on. Uh, if you ever want a pie, just, just, just contact me. Anyways, your clothing did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. Now I had to repent and apologize to God because when I read this <laughs> earlier this evening, I was reading it quite fast. And I said, your clothing did not wear out on you, nor did your feet smell for these 40 years. I couldn't help it. I just couldn't help it. But anyways, he says, nor did your feet swell these 40 years. Thus you are to know in your heart that the Lord your God was disciplining you just as he, just as man, a man disciplines his son. We can go to the book of Hebrews about that. Amen. Don't despise God because he disciplines you. He does it because he loves you and he wants to see the best. Because remember, he's conforming us into the image and making us into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. Verse 6. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Now, it's not me be afraid of him, fear him, but it's reverently fear him and adore and worship him. Amen? Okay. Verse 7. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. A land now, now he gives him a description. A land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing forth in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees, and pomegranates. Oh, I love pomegranates. A land of olive oil and honey. A land where you shall eat food without scarcity, okay? In which you shall not lack anything. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. Man, God was getting ready to provide them with every single thing that they would ever, ever need. In fact, if you go over to the book of um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, you know, it talks about there that I have given you everything pertaining to life and godliness. Think about it. Amen. All right. Verse 10. When you have eaten and are satisfied, you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. You know, we have a habit. Uh, one, one of the things in traditions, you know, our habit or tradition, whatever you want to call it, that we do today, we always say grace before we eat, right? But I like this idea here that sit down, eat, and then after you've eaten, give God the thanks that he's been able to provide the food, provide the resources for you so that you could have a good meal. Amen? All right, verse 11. Beware. Now, here's, here's a warning. Beware, lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his ordinances and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. Least when you have eaten and are satisfied and have built good houses and lived in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and gold multiply and all that you have multiplies, then your heart becomes proud and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. He led you through the great and terrible wilderness with his fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water. He brought water for you out of the rock of Flint. In the wilderness he fed you manna which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do good for you in the end. I think it's in Romans 8. Uh, all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Verse 17. 
Otherwise, you may say in your heart, my power and strength of my hand made me this wealth. But, God's got a but here. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who is giving you power to make wealth, that he may confirm his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. And death shall come about, if you ever forget the Lord your God, and go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you today that you shall surely perish. Like the nations that the Lord makes to perish before you, so you shall perish because you would not listen to the voice of the Lord your God. So I'm telling you, that, that chapter alone is a beautiful, beautiful chapter. And I encourage you to read it, study it, listen to it. Um, ask God to point things out to you. You know, there's just so much in there, and there's so much that we can relate uh, back in those days uh, that we can relate to the to the New Testament times, and like I did Romans eight twenty eight and a few other things. And um, it's just the Word of God is just it's it's endless. We can't stop talking about it. At least I can't. So uh, this is Pastor Dale. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, I really thank God because He blesses me every time I read it. And um, we'll pick up a another chapter book, and you know. One of the things I want to I want to do, and I I have shared with God that my desire to do this. Um, I have one of my, I guess say bucket list things, is to teach at a Bible college. You know, as as a, an associate professor, whatever the case may be, a teacher, and uh, that's that's never come about. But um, I remember I had applied for one once where I went to seminary. And, 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 uh, I, you know, I, I don't, they never answered me. So I don't know whether I ever uh, was considered for a job there or not. But anyways, I've always wanted to teach the word of God. And if I could specialize in teaching, uh, certain books, it would be the book of Ephesians and the book of first John. Those two books are my books. I mean, I, if you could see my Bible and how much I have marked up in them, because those two books alone speak volumes to me. I mean, literally volumes. So you know, keep that in prayer. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm 77. You know, some people's like, oh, we don't want to hire anybody that old. And that's okay. I, I can understand. But I ask you to, to pray for me that perhaps God would open a door for me to be able to teach, you know, somewheres the word of God and especially those books. And um, I would, I mean, believe me, I would give my entire life, everything I have for that opportunity to teach the word of God to other people, especially to the young people, and to get the richness out of there because the book of Ephesians, oh, man, I get chills thinking about it. That first John, oh my gosh, man, they are so rich and uh, there's so much in there. So praise God. So this is Pastor Dale. Keep me in prayer that maybe God will open the door for this uh, someday um, now. And uh, I just, I just want to talk about God's word. Amen. God loves you and so do I. And Father, I ask that you bless those that, that watch this and listen to this and that God, that you would supernaturally touch their hearts and their minds. And Father, give them that passion, desire, Father, that you've given to me, uh, Father God, for the word of God to get it into our hearts and our minds and our lives so that, Father, you can uh, transform us and conform us into the image of your son, Jesus Christ, Father, um, and be holy like we're supposed to be because you're holy. And that's what you've told us. Be holy for I am holy. And Father, so that's what we should aim for. We give you thanks, honor, and praise. Thank you for your word, Father. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who teaches and guides us. And thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who made all this possible. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God bless you. And what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Amen. God bless you all. See you later. Bye.